welcome to the Naked Podcaster. Get ready to hear stories of someone brave enough to bear it all. Let's get naked. Welcome to the Naked Podcaster. Today I have Emily Davis on again. We're doing a coaching session. I'm so excited. So your website is damselnomore.com. Yeah. We have all the links, but now that you're doing a coaching episode, dive into what that looks like. Um, my coaching, what my coaching looks like. Yeah. And the website and you don't really call it coaching. And I know some of this, but also you said on our first podcast that most people who are coming to you are asking for love in their life. And I was like, that's the dumbest one ever. I would not do that one. And now we're going to not do that one. (laughs) We're not going to do that one. So um, I work with people in a couple different ways and you can kind of see it on my website. My website has kind of like a, a wide spattering of like basically all the things I do, which, which is hefty. Everything from like, I do intuitive channel artwork. So I'll channel what your spirit guide looks like and draw them for you and give that to you. So I do that, um, which is kind of disconnected from my business. Business. It's more of like a passion project <laughs> project that I do on there. So there's that on there. Um, I also do readings of every different variety. So when I do a reading, it's really focused on what the person is really wanting, right? So with reading specifically, most of the time, those are, like I said before, like love life, um, career, mediumship stuff, past life readings, uh, messages from your guides, energy healing. Like there's a huge menu and I have that all on my site as well. But those are really kind of focused specifically on like one targeted area. But then in my coaching, which I don't, the word coaching doesn't really fit for a lot of what I do, Uh Um, but it is the word that is acceptable for people's brains to understand. So we go in that space. (laughs) Um, But for when I, when I do my metaphysical coaching, really what it is, is it's not even me coaching anyone. It's me tuning into your guides messages um, and the universe messages and the energy I can see and sense and feel for you. And basically translating that into the coaching messages that you receive. So what we're going to be doing today is one of my magical clarity sessions where we get really, really clear on, um, through me channeling and talking to your guides, we get really clear on basically your energetic blocks, things that are holding you back from really learning how to connect with your own psychic abilities. Um, Because we all have these crazy, fun, magical abilities. We just need to learn how to tap into them. So we get clear on that. We talk a lot about what those abilities might be for you. We channel some on that. I'll do some limiting belief pulling. Oh, yeah. I'll do a ton of that. As, As your guides say, I'll be like, hey, they just told me this. Does that resonate? And then you'll <laughs> go from there. And then so we pull and flip limiting beliefs pretty much throughout the entire session so that by the end of it, you already are starting to really release some of the dam that's holding your magic back. Woo. Yeah. The first energy worker I ever worked with said, you're doing the work yourself. I'm just the conduit. And I'm like, don't minimize the conduit because on my own, I'd be sitting here the same as I was before I walked. Like nothing would change because I don't know how, then I get stuck in the how, then I get pissed at the how. And you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. we're all in this, having that other person as that conduit to channel that is, it doesn't happen without that. Yeah, so it's I wanna, really helpful. I want to <laughs> point out, I'm like, woo woo, scream it out to you. Because I don't know, I know what we're doing, but I couldn't, if you said, this is what I want you to go do, I'd be like, okay, not happening. <laughs> You'd be like, I, just, I can sit in a room by myself. That sounds, nice. <laughs> that sounds like <laughs> meditation that's not going to work for me, you know? So what you're doing is really amazing. Yeah. And so this is one of my kind of sessions that I do with people. So in more over in my program, most of the time I do kind of a group program where there's weekly assignments and the whole nine yards in that space. Yeah. And then we do like a group call every Friday. So I kind of do a channel flow that way. So the kind of session that we're doing is more what I do when I'm spiritually advising someone, um, which I'm a spiritual right. advisor as well. So if they're like, Hey, what's going on? And then we have this kind of coaching session that way. So it's more one-on-one. So it's a little bit out of the box for my typical stuff, but it's really fun. <laughs> I like out of the box. Okay. I have notes. I'm writing notes because I forget everything, which we've talked about. And I feel kind of like this is an opportunity for my spirit guides to tattle. Mm. (laughs) Why do you feel that way? Uh, Because you're like, I'm going to ask them what your limiting beliefs are and what messages they have for me. And I'm like, shit, they're going to turn me in. (laughs) But in a really, really good way, because I know they want to help. 
Yes. So that's the cool thing about spirit guides. Um, and I always kind of make that distinction for people a lot of the time too, because they'll be like, oh, are they my ancestors? Are they this or they that? I'm like, well, they can be. But the cool thing about what spirit guides are is we all have a team of them. There's many of them. And some might come to give you one message one time and then never come to you again. Got some it. might be with you all the time for your entire life, very actively every single day. And some might specifically help you with just specific things. So, um, you know, whether you have a guide that's really dedicated to love or you have a guide that's really dedicated to, you know, helping you have boundaries, like there's, there's certain things that way. So we all have a huge team and they all play their own role. Whereas opposed to like a mediumship read, when I do those, when I'm, you know, really helping people talk to their past loved ones, it's, they don't always come forward to speak like your spirit guides do. So when I tune into your spirit guides, they always have messages because they're constantly trying to help you and push you to do the next the thing they're like come on do the thing but when i turn into mediumships um sometimes they come forward sometimes they don't because they're not necessarily there to guide you they have their own thing going on so i'll leave the space open but sometimes a relative comes through most of the time you know because they still want to talk but most of the time the relative will come through sometimes they'll come through and they'll be like i'm not ready to talk right now i'll come i'll talk later and we go from there and then sometimes they'll like send a representative that'll be like no they're not available <laughs> like basically and I'm like okay wow yeah it's, that it's will really be me in the afterlife okay I have a another question are spirit okay. guides if you're talking about past lives mm -hmm. do you tend do you have the same spirit guides in do they follow you through lives that's so that's a wonderful question I love that one sometimes yes most of the time um you we have a lot more control about over what lifetime we come into than we give ourselves credit for uh -huh, so agree. before we choose to come into this life to learn the lessons that we decided we were going to learn in this lifetime we have a meeting with the people we would like to help guide us essentially oh, the got it. Okay. That we would like to help guide us and they might also have a vested interest in the lesson you're learning the change you're making the impact you're going to have whatever it is or you may already just have a bond with them you, you know you guys were okay. sisters in a past life or whatever it is from there um and so it kind of just depends uh some will stay with you throughout all time and then some just kind of change up based on what your needs are for the coming lifetime that you're in what about you i've heard that in past lives, we tend to take the same issues or struggles with us, or we could be feeling a struggle from a past life or even a, a past generation, like my great grandmother, for example. Mm -hmm. And we could be like taking that, the weight of her issue on without realizing it. So for me, I'm trying to put all those pieces together. The spirit guides though would know if you're struggling with this now, you've been struggling with it for like all these lives. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of times, so we carry trauma in multiple different ways from, you know, past lifetimes, right? So we carry trauma from our past lives um, into this life until we're able to and ready to see and heal it. So we may have carried it just for one from our last past life, right. or we may have carried it for seven. Like there, there's, then it's affect us, affected us every time sounds like dominoes. With ancestral stuff, we actually inherit that trauma in a physical DNA. So we actually, like, okay. they've proved it that you can inherit trauma through your DNA. So it's like holding trauma on different levels in your body. If you mm -hmm. have your personal trauma down here, which is the stuff that's happened to you in this lifetime that has been very traumatic, that's kind of sitting here. And then you have the stuff from your past life sitting there. And then I'm, I'm doing hand psych signals for those people who are just listening, but like I'm making like stairs. And right, then, right. <laughs> and so then the, like on then the top level, you would have the stuff you, you know, inherited genetically. You can specify when I, you know, I've specified when talking with spirit guides, like, hey, is she holding this from her ancestors or is this a past life? Okay. And the, the energy kind of feels a little bit different. But the thing is, is it's all healed relatively the same. You okay. Know, you're doing the same things to heal it, whether it came from a past life or ancestry or, you know, your childhood like all the same the method is going to be kind of relatively the same got it awesome thank you for answering my questions that's so great yeah you're so welcome so to kick this off then yes me, um a little bit more about kind of your story times that you felt your intuition really kick in any sort of magical things that have come through for you i know i have it on the questionnaire but just to give the, the more of an energy reading from me well, and I don't remember exactly what I wrote, but as far as intuition coming in, I was raised religious. And so for me, it doesn't matter if you say like Holy Spirit or, or um, the intuition you feel, the intuition kind of goes th with Holy Spirit in my mind. Because when you pray in church and you feel that feeling of something like, yes, I'm supposed to do that, that's what intuition, how intuition, 
intuition works with other people. Mm -hmm. So definitely, I think the first time I felt that was realizing that how I was being raised wasn't right, but not knowing that there was a different, not knowing what wasn't right or how it could be different. Mm -hmm. And also learning that my parents' divorce and things were happening weren't my fault. And that's a really hard thing for a kid to navigate and believe. But I had yeah. this deep intuitive feeling that it wasn't my fault and that things should be different. I also knew intuitively that my mom was a really good mom on many levels, but her decisions made it nearly impossible for her to tap into that. Mm. So she could have been really great and she wasn't based on her decisions. So um, and it took me a long time to verbalize that. Like when I was a kid, I totally didn't verbalize it, but it was like, she was right there and she wasn't the one, um, creating the abuse, but she was bringing dangerous people in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I think after that, um, when I moved in with my great grandmother before the summer before high school, I knew I wouldn't have to move again. And we didn't stay living with her for a super long time, but I just knew on that move, like I... I did not have to go back to the dangerous men my mom was bringing into the house. Type. I didn't have to go back to that situation. That was real intuitive for me. When I was 15 and a doctor said, I, and I don't know why, again, he had to have been using intuition. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to have kids. You're probably going to have to go through infertility. It was like, ching. That was like a plant the seed moment. And I remembered, I was like, huh, interesting, even at 15. And since then, I'm like, I just don't get why he would have said that. But I'm so grateful that he did. Mm -hmm. um that's a spirit guide too okay because because it was so like I never had sex it was he was the first man that touched me below the belt and I hadn't I was almost 16 and I hadn't had a period yet and my mom was worried about me and she brought me in and I kind of told him my history which was almost nothing like mm -hmm. literally we had no information and he said to me you know you're probably gonna have trouble having kids and if you do you need to realize that it, you'll most likely need to go through infertility. And I did, I did need to go through infertility and I was totally cool with it. Cause he said it when I was 15. Yeah, no. So there, that's a cool thing, a cool story too, because sometimes our spirit guides can be physical people that like the universe sends us to give us a message we desperately need right then. Yep. Um, so I love that. That's one of them. Keep going, keep going. My third grade teacher was the first person, like she was the most pivotal person that made a difference to me. And she was just being herself. She was just being Carolyn, who was a teacher, right? Like mm -hmm. she didn't remember me. I found her 20 years ago. She didn't remember me specifically. She wasn't singling me out, which was awesome. She taught me that you can make a really big impact in someone else's life, even in passing without ever knowing it. Mm -hmm. And again, I didn't articulate that in third grade, but I, to, to, I knew moving forward, even though life got worse, I was worth it to that woman. And mm -hmm. that is what got me through and made me, it totally changed the trajectory of my life. Mm -hmm. um, That's beautiful. My first baby, um, who's just turned 28, uh, April of 2020, she turned 28, my midwife looked at me and said, I don't know what's going on, but something's not right and you need to transfer to a hospital. And it saved my daughter's life. She was born with a lung disease. They told me she wouldn't uh, live. So I've definitely known that other people have been intuitive in interactions with me where I was like, yes, and I know I have to listen. For me, doing foster care like I knew I'd have a family. I wasn't worried mm -hmm. about it. I wanted to make a difference in the lives of kids. And I did foster care and you get that call. You know, we have this kid and I said no more than I said yes. I know with 18 kids, that seems ridiculous, but I, <laughs> I did say no more than I said yes. And I knew when that child was mine, there wasn't a question like mm -hmm. two by four to the head. I knew that that was my child. And at that point I would say, I'd pray about it. Like they tell me about this kid and I write things down, but I think intuitively I knew before the conversation was over, I didn't mm -hmm. need to go pray about it. Like I just, I knew that it was not or was. And what did that feel like in your body? Um, your energy. Uh, it's mostly my stomach mm -hmm. and it comes up to my heart area and it's maybe slightly like other people explain anxiety or that nervous excitement. Like when I go to speak on stage, cause I don't have anxiety. I've never, I don't think I've ever experienced it in a fearful way, but like, if I know I'm going to go on stage to stage to speak and I get it, that like rush of adrenaline where your body mm -hmm. kind of tingles. Mm -hmm. like your, your skin yeah. tingles a little and it's in, it's, it's really in my gut and up to my heart where it feels full. It feels good. It feels happy. It feels warm. 
and it feels a little tingly and it's totally not in my head, <laughs> which that's where I, it's easier to live there for me. To live in your head than in your body. Oh, yeah. 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 Unless you want to tell me differently, I swear I would love to live less in my head and more in my intuition. So I always would, would, I would tell you, I don't really feel like I'm that intuitive because I don't like completely disagree. Yeah. I know that that's a wrong statement. No, okay. it's an honest statement, which doesn't make it wrong. It's a still a valid like statement to like, if you're feeling that way, but the reason you're saying that is because you have a different idea of what intuition actually is that you're saying, comparing your actual intuition to. So a lot of times when I do these, you know, people are like, Oh, I really wish I had this ability. Oh, then there was that one time I did this, this, and this it was like, you just said what you wish you had. <laughs> like, you just said you did it. And it doesn't have to be this grand massive thing. You were able to list seven times when you distinctly felt your intuition in your body physically yeah. give your reaction to guide you so then yeah. the whole concept is like tuning in and leveraging that intuition when and how you want right so that you can actually tune into it consciously instead of just letting it smack you in the face which is kind of yes. cool it's really interesting as you were talking one of your guides came forward immediately and she she said she, she's like the reason she's sitting in her head is because she has control issues she doesn't want to release the control that comes once you think things through and just go with the feeling because she doesn't trust her body to guide her correctly that's true. Yeah. So it's really interesting. I was like, okay. And then you're sitting there like, I wish I had better intuition. And then so you're also sitting there with like the just juxtaposition of like, I don't trust my body, but I wish that my intuition was better. I'm like, that's not how those two things work. So I know I've had one spirit guide and it's a woman around like uh, forever. Mm -hmm. And it's I, this it's this one that's coming forward. Okay. She's like in your physical space. So sometimes spirit guides yes. are like, yeah. Sometimes the spirit guides are more like in just kind of like your, the energetic space and they just kind no, of- No, like she's there. she's there. And sometimes very peripheral, like if you said, well, what does she look like? Well, I can't see her, but I can, it's like knowing that someone's right here outside your periphery. But mm -hmm. if you turn and look, they're not there. There's nothing there. Yeah. That's her. She's always there. Yes. And she has like a very, um, her energy is really witchy, I guess is the best way to describe it. Like she's very connected to like the earth and um that sort of thing but she's like also like very intelligent you know like um it's not like she's everything woo because that wouldn't be, work for you no. <laughs> she's like no I need to you know use my mind too and like we connect on a, a, like a intelligent level too you know on that level so she's like in both kind of spaces but she's very witchy very like um we all her big thing is like having power over your destiny having power over your reality and like reminding you of the power that you have even in those times where you felt really powerless mm -hmm. how you were able to overcome those so that's like her big focus when she comes to like guiding you which is why she's with you all the time because any of those times that you have the self-doubt thing she's immediately there like no 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 hold on like <laughs> you don't get to do that right um, yeah so she's really cool she has like really pretty like long black hair that's kind of yeah like yeah <laughs> Have you seen that before? Yep. Yeah. And I remember one time, like, and this is so silly, but thinking like, is your dress white or is it light blue? And I can't figure it out. And it, she's very um, flowy to me, including her hair. So mm -hmm. I remember being a little kid and knowing she was there. And that's where I, that's, I mean, like, I can tell you when I lived in Alaska, I lived there for 10 years and I felt her a lot when we were there. Like, mm -hmm. like I, I, I felt like I could see her a lot more there than some other places. And I don't know if it was the location or me, but I've definitely felt intuition when it's time to leave a situation. Mm. And it's usually longer than I would have probably gone on my own. Like I hold myself back and I'm not sure why, cause I want to leave. Um, it's, but I know it's not right. And then when it's right, I'm like, I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. There's still, um, immediately she's like, it's cause she still has people pleasy stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. But I felt like I was being told to stay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. People pleasy. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Which we all have that. Like it's we're right. humans are herd animals. We want to please the herd. So right. we don't get kicked out. Like that's the idea. Well, and <laughs> I want things to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think like if, if, if you're talking about a relationship, like a man and woman relationship, if you're both invested and committed and you want it, it is possible. Mm -hmm. If I know if I'm willing to work through stuff and that other person is, then we can actually work through this. And I want to give that possibility, that opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah. 
Anyway, then I'm out. I told you about the dimes too. The dimes? When I, I wrote you to did. you. Oh yeah, you did. Tell me. Okay, anyway. Reiterate it though. Tell me more about that energy as well. So when Dane and I met, and I did not want to date anyone, and he has a wife that died, and he has some of her ashes. We have them here in the house. And at first I was like, okay, that's a little creepy. Mm -hmm. But his wife had a sister who was 15 at the time that his wife died. Okay. And she kind of, she's really struggled, um, I think, with drug issues and stuff like that. And Dane's thought was if he saved some of the ashes, that if her sister ever, ever came forward, Mm -hmm. he would be able to give them to her so that she could spread her sister's ashes and kind of have closure, which then I was like, Oh, Oh my gosh, we're totally saving these. I, mm -hmm. since then intuitively, I feel like our youngest daughter who's 10 right now was two when her mom died. When Dane's wife died, it was her mom. Mm -hmm. She was two. And I actually think, although that's the reason he kept them, it will actually be for them to release the ashes for her to have closure. Yeah that's intuitively how I feel. So when Dane and I met, he has this dead wife and I was finding dimes everywhere. Like I do laundry. I'd fold it. There'd be a dime on the bed. I'd sweep the floor. I'd mop it. I'd walk into the kitchen. There's a dime on the floor. They were everywhere. And I was like, I don't even, I don't understand where they're coming from and why. And I looked it up and it said someone from the other side is thinking of you or, and I felt like mm -hmm. it was Danielle. I felt like it was his dead wife. Mm -hmm. And I, it was happening with such frequency and I felt like, I felt external physical pressure. Like, you know, you're being hugged and like, mm -hmm. it felt like that. And I would be in the house alone. And I'd be like, look, Danielle, if this is you, I get it. And so cool that you're being supportive or trying to tell me something, but I really need you to back the fuck off and give me some space. I can't function in my life and have you feel this all the time. You got to lay off. And so I stopped seeing dimes as much. And then I told Dane, I'm like, I, oh my God, he's so funny. So I was like, I was finding these dimes all the time. And I looked it up and I swore it was Danielle. So I had this whole conversation with her out loud. And all of a sudden I start, I, like I find a dime. And I was like, I started seeing dimes again. He's like, no, it's me. I was leaving them. I'm just being like, I'm being a twit. <laughs> You're like, damn it. <laughs> like, seriously? Because I was getting ready to yell at her. <laughs> anyway. Yes. But for a period of time after we got together, when I was trying to hash out everything, and he had lost, because of Danielle, he had lost all of his um, sentimental, personal belongings. So I, he had like three old phones, an old iPod, and a computer tower that had crashed. And I brought all of them into different people. And I was like, every photo and video, get them off of these devices. And, and mm -hmm. From that, I created this folder, and from that, I created a list of pictures that I printed, and from that, um, his older daughter and I put together a scrapbook about Danielle and her life for Taven, my daughter, because I felt mm -hmm. like she didn't, she was remembering stories, but they were slipping away, and um, I wanted her to have that memory of her mom and it was during all that time and I was bringing the kids it had been a couple of years it had been over a year and a half since she had died but I was bringing a couple of the kids the two girls to therapy for kids who have lost a love like it was I thought I did all this foster care and all this adoption and so the death of a like it's not really any different you lost your parent in a way that you didn't want to you wish they were back you'd prefer to have them raise you but I'm here instead same mm -hmm. it is not the same Mm -hmm. A dead wife is not the same. So that was hard because it was one time that I felt, and I didn't feel like the, the dimes or that physical pressure was coming from a negative place, but I couldn't process it. I didn't have any way to process it all. And I'm dealing with emotions of kids and just the whole situation. And we had 12 kids mm -hmm. at home. I mean, it's not like this was the only thing we were dealing with, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if that's what the dimes are or if it really was Danielle, but I, I did stop it when I was like, I can't, I can't, I, it's just too much for me right now. I'm overloaded. Mm -hmm. It was, it was definitely Danielle sending you the dimes as an approval and also as gratitude. Okay. So it wasn't just like a good job like, thank you for doing, it was, like, deep gratitude of, like, okay. thank you so much, like, this is exactly what they needed, and she also was, like, kind of a driving force in you guys meeting, and that's sort of <gasps> We met on her birthday. Okay, well, that, there you and go. It, and it was a couple weeks before we were supposed to meet, oh. and Dane told me later, he's like, I swear she had something to do with it, mm -hmm. 
She really did. She has like this intense force, like pushing you guys together that I can like sense of the energy. Yeah. Cause I, <laughs> she we, picked you. she's like, that one. which is so interesting. Cause we would have absolutely not liked each other in real life. I do not believe. Yep. There, I do not think, I think we would have, yeah, on a superficial level, it would have been fine. I think I am, I am such a different personality from her that that is what Dane and Taven and Abby needed. You know, the yeah. boys were actually okay. I think they needed somebody that was really not like her. That was the whole thing. That was the whole point. Yeah. Like she, she's very like adamant on that too. She was like, yeah, like, you needed to be loud and you needed to be different and everything needed to feel different. Yes. <laughs> you roll your eyes like, well, I was like, yeah, I'm a little loud. Yes. And <laughs> you know, and it's hard when it's, if you get divorced and that person just like the relationship fell apart and mm -hmm. that you try to get back together and you couldn't, that's a different type of closure. When someone dies, it's like, she has a lot of friction in her personality. Mm -hmm. She, she likes friction, but that friction equated to passion in their relationship. It could have been argumentative or confrontational, but it was passionate. So, um, the last few years it was, it was, but it was, it, you know, I mean, she went through, it was tragic. The whole situation was really tragic. And so, um, yeah, I'm mad at her sometimes. <laughs> I'm pissed at her. I feel like she got some of the best parts of Dane and she blew it. Mm -hmm. And I, then I don't get them. And so sometimes I'm mad that she picked me, you know, cause this is, it makes it re it's really difficult for me. That situation, this situation has been like, yeah. not, it's not hard every single day, but I, I have been outside my comfort zone on many occasions because of the whole situation. So sometimes I'm like, what were you thinking? <laughs> what is the matter with you? So, and I think that because of my, my own friction with her as a personality, it makes it more difficult in my relationship now with mm -hmm. Dan. So yeah. anyway. No, and I can intuitively feel that too. And some of those blocks as well, because you, you connect differently than she did and he still has leftover trauma from that experience as well oh, yeah. that affects that deeply, yep. right? And not that their relationship was obviously like kind of like this as well. It was. Yep. It was a lot like that. It was a wonderful, yeah, it felt very, it's very tumultuous energy, but your guys' is, is, it actually feels really peaceful as far as it the is. energetic field. It doesn't feel like that, like in that tension or every, anything like that. It feels like this beautiful, like calm lake of energy. Mm -hmm. It's like, how it is and, and it's really really good and it, it allows you to have a different part to yourself of yourself kind of come out in a comfortable way which is really good and kind of what you needed to and so yep. I think that's another reason why she kind of was like she also would do that this is good like <laughs> this is a good thing it was <laughs> just... even with the baggage it's just good um but yeah and she definitely has interesting personality even as I'm channeling her she, um, yeah very uh very a lot of pressure she, she's very much like a pressure even as like I'm chan I'm like touching my chest because I like, feel her like touch like pressure pressure mm -hmm. pressure of, like to get people to do what she wanted and stuff like yep. that so even now she's just trying to be like like tell her this and this and this and you know like as much pressure as possible I'm like hold on. right hold on because yeah. I want all the same things maybe mm -hmm. even in a way that's more or different than she did I mm -hmm. get it like I am with you 150 percent Mm -hmm. but it was the same thing with her being there and leaving the dimes, me feeling physical pressure, mm -hmm. like, no, it's like, she like sits here. like air pressure on your body. It was like, I, it's not the way to get things done. And that is her personality. She's very tumultuous. And so I want the messages. I need them to be like, dial it back. The problem mm -hmm. with that kind of personality and feeling is that, if you do it that way, all you get back is resistance, mm -hmm. right? You're like, no, wait a minute. Like if you can just dial it back a little bit, then there's no, then you get your way. Mm -hmm. So me with her is kind of like, if you dial yourself back a little, I can be on board with you. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, not, yeah. Anyway, she's very tumultuous and very pressured. Yeah. Yeah. Very much pressure. And even after, even in the other space she's like very much like a lot of i'm not surprised on everything i'm like whoa okay i think a lot and of that comes from her guilt i think she's i mean i can't imagine her not having a tremendous amount of guilt 
Um, she's sad. Yeah. She's sad. Like yeah. Mary, like even she's peaceful and she's like, it's interesting to explain because her energy is very much like she's comfortable in the other space, but she's just sad of the life that she lived, that she couldn't be more than what she was and would, couldn't live past the things that were stopping her from being who she actually was. So everything just felt like a mask. And so she felt like she didn't even oh. have a life. It was just masks. Yeah, I can definitely see that. I, I mean, like so much, I can see that. And yeah. she was 36 week, weeks pregnant with Dane's son when she died. Mm-hmm. And there there's um, residual, how do I say? There's like an echo from that. I don't know that that's the right word. So look at me being all intuitive. But it wasn't just that's her. The goal. <laughs> I feel like a reverberation or like when you drop a pebble in the water and there are ripples that come out, there's something about that part of it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he's gone, you know, they, they, she, he was, he died with her. They Mm -hmm. were cremated together. There's not like we can go back and figure it out, but I don't know if it's her sadness or Dane's sadness or both of their sadnesses or even Taven's sadness because, because this, baby is kale because kale died with her um and there's i don't feel like in my mind i don't feel like there are loose threads from that that i could even wrap up Mm -hmm. but i think that that's probably part of her sadness too um no okay good okay he was not he knew when coming to her body that he was not going to be born he came so she wouldn't die alone oh Mm -hmm. okay yeah okay that makes sense actually mm-hmm. all right i know that was like no i just feel the energy right now we went on a total <laughs> tangent there we did was, but that's okay <laughs> whoever comes through comes through um interesting so you have another guy that is kind of coming through as well and she was trying to she talked a couple different times um she's fucking blunt this guy that's coming through she's like very very blunt she is like um short cropped hair and she keeps showing me like she's like almost in like almost like a battle outfit kind of like she she feels very ancient and extremely extremely old so I think it's like an old like from a very very far away past life you guys met and and then she's kind of guided you in and out but she's like super duper duper blunt and she immediately said like halfway through like the second I tuned into her I was like hey there's another energy here and I tapped into her and she was just like she hides behind a mask of busy to pretend that she's not as woo as she is (laughs) that's funny i hate the word busy and she knows that i'm very deliberate but yeah yeah it's it's not necessarily and it's not the word busy it's the if i do everything i don't have to stop moving and Mm -hmm. like stopping moving like energy like how it looks in the energy field is like if i stop moving that equals death it's like the best way to explain the energy like if i have to stop and be and just see just myself and be just with myself that is dangerous and uncomfortable how does that feel? She's that very feels, about that. That feels pretty right. <laughs> okay, well, let's, before I even tune in anymore, let me flip that belief for you mm. um, from like, you know, I'm unable to be and I must keep going in order to feel safe to I'm comfortable being and it's okay to slow down when I need to slow down. Um, obviously with discernment, which always stays with the limiting belief. So, sound good? Yes. Okay, I'll go really quick. So it just is like a three seconds as I just switch it for you, so you can just chill and, and breathe, and that's all. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So part of the reason that she's really clear about that one is she's like she would feel her intuition so much more often if she knew what it felt like to just be in her body. Um, and to sit and just in, like feel in your body. So you're very clear. Um, Claire sentient is what it is where you feel things physically in your physical body. Okay. Did you freeze? Great. A little bit for just a second. That's okay. So I'm okay. Claire sentient. I feel things in my body. Okay. Yeah. So you feel things physically in your body. So your intuition showing up in your physical body. Um, and you, these other gifts, like you feel a presence, like right there, mm-hmm. you're feeling that in your physical being, you're sensing right. it in that way. And that's part of the reason that you have that resistance to being connected to your body and you want to sit more in your head is because it's this un like other you get other feelings and weird interesting things happen that your brain your human brain doesn't fully understand so they have like your human brain has this resistance to truly like sitting in your body and feeling your physical stuff and being connected in that space um because it feels like you know 
as our brain works. Like yesterday, we sat on the couch and watched Netflix for eight hours and we survived. So therefore, let's do that again today and not change at all because we are supposed to survive and not the goal. So anytime <laughs> your physical, like you want to tune into your physical body, your brain's like, no, 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 we don't need to do that. We're just going to go over here because physical stuff is weird. I'm so good at that. Tell her I'm so good. I'm so good at that. <laughs> <laughs> of using your brain to bypass what you're feeling yes <laughs> yes uh -huh. and also she she said really clearly too she needs to stop thinking herself out of things all the time i'm yeah. so I, look i'm really good at that one too <laughs> um and the funny thing is she's like she could be super powerful if she just stopped thinking about it <laughs> i know that and then i think and you know the first thing i think is I, I know that i totally believe it i feel like i'm like on the edge of a cliff and it would take like a breath of wind to get me there right mm -hmm. dane says it all the time like how how do you do all of these things have all of this stuff set up and no one knows who you are how is that even possible? And I'm like, I don't know. I know it's right there. I can feel it. I can taste it. I can smell it. I just don't know that breath of wind hasn't come. And then I do what? How? And that means I'm in my head. Mm -hmm. Yep. But I honestly have to say, yeah, if I, I, I think myself out of stuff, and I, but I don't know how to make that switch. Okay. So... Let me tune it. Let's dig into that a little bit because that is a manifestation question. Yeah. Apparently. And so yeah. manifesting, there's a trick to do it that I always recommend everybody do because people okay. constantly, the human thing with manifesting is like, Ooh, I want a new house. So I'm going to think about the new house and I want the new house, right? Like that's the concept. So we think about the new house, but that's not how the energy, like energy actually communicates. That's not how the universe actually communicates. The universe communicates through feeling and feeling is inherently energy, right? So what you need to do to have that thing is get your head out of your head from the why, because that's, or the how, and that's not going to help at all. But what would it feel like to have that thing? Mm, so okay. Sit in what it would feel like, not even picture it. You don't even need to picture what the thing is. If you just are like, oh, it would feel like this to be sitting in the lovely window and having the sun on my face and just having this peace and there wouldn't be carpet with dog hair all over it. It'd be great. <laughs> like, <laughs> whatever it is. How do you know? <laughs> Then my dog like stretches out behind me like yes. no mine is it's so gross yeah <laughs> yeah yeah okay so you actually feel it you so you just put yourself there and feel what it would feel like to have that next thing and then you just feel that as often as possible and what that does is it raises your vibrational level within your body to meet the vibration of the thing you're calling in that feeling because you're living that feeling consciously. Okay. So that is where your gap is, is like you try to go into the thinking of the how, okay, if I do this, then that's going to work that way. The universe doesn't work in how at all because yeah. it's always going to bend the rules to get you what you want. And I don't work in the how either because it screws it up every single time, <laughs> <laughs> but it is my default. Yeah. Well, I know that. Safe. Yeah. And I don't like it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very frustrating that you go there and I'm like, God, if I'm asking that question, I'm in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, at least I've gotten to the point where I recognize that I'm there and that I don't want to be there, but I need to learn to navigate out of my head better. And I haven't learned to navigate that super well. So anytime you get into that how mode, put yourself in the feeling of what you want. Yep. Got it. Okay. So and that's going to that's gonna make a huge amount of difference in the way you're communicating with the energy. Yep, it Because will. what you're doing is you're throwing up the how and you're like, cool, safety net, nothing's going to happen now. And even if you can recognize it, you still stopped your brain, right? So you like still yeah. stopped the process of manifestation. Like every time you want something and you sit in that feeling, it's like Mary Poppins where like all the little toys get up and start cleaning up the rooms. Yeah. Like the universe starts all your little toys. And then the second you're like, but how? The, universe, the little toys like stop and they look at you like, WTF, like what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> we were coming, we were doing the how, and now you want to do the how? So we can't even exist. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, but okay. doing that will be really good. So okay, that'll that's, that's great. That over. Okay. And then let's also, um, you have a really strong limiting belief that's kind of sitting in your energy um, okay. kind of considerably, and it is that um, if I don't know how it comes, it won't come. Yeah. And if I don't have control how it comes, I won't have control over it when it does. Right. That's so true. Like, yeah. So there's this big need to have the control, and 
none of us have control over anything. Like we, we're conscious creators of our reality, but in truth, that's just our energy speaking to the universe, etc. So we need to more flow with the universe to create what we want, as opposed to fight the universe to get what we want. <laughs> so yeah. let's go. <laughs> let's go ahead and flip those two. Just kind of the opposite of what they were. Okay. And then I'll I'll see what else is, your guys are saying. This one guy is really hilarious, by the way. Oh. I have like a badass battle bitch with short hair. Love it. My witchy uh -huh. earth person. Like, I love this. They're all parts of who I am. Yes. Yeah. And they've got, that's, that's, that should be or how it feels. I'm part of, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, they're going to resonate with you. That's the whole point, right? So yeah. You actually understand their messages. It's fantastic. But it is. Uh, tell me about some dreams you've had. Are you a vivid dreamer? Sometimes I don't think super often, but when I am, they are pretty vivid. I have a really hard time remembering them though. Okay. Um, Dane gets up at four to go to work. And if I'm dreaming and I say, I was like, I was just dreaming about whatever. I have an easier time remembering it, but they tend to fade. Mm. Um, and yeah. I don't think you're dreaming like necessarily messages. Like some people like tune in, I'll be like, whoa, you're like super much a dream oracle. Like you see shit in your dreams that is, is real things, you know, or has real messages. I don't think necessarily that uh -uh. What, what your, your short of higher battle bitch is saying is um, <laughs> she is like, it's a training exercise to help you get better at seeing your guides and visualizing what you want and being able to channel information, like kind of as pictures in your head, trying to remember your dreams as those pictures in your head is a perfect training exercise to do that okay mm -hmm. um and that'll help because like i you definitely have like a very wide imagination and um it's really beautiful uh, there's some limits that you have on it from like past trauma that like as far as like what i see when i imagine is not real which like fucking everybody has right because, like, as we're little kids it's like oh it's just in your imagination which is like that's where we get information. Like that's your imagination alone channels massive amounts of energy and power. Right. So you have a little bit of limits there and we can pull those down in a sec, but using your, like using the, trying to recall your dreams is like the same thing as using your imagination and it'll help train you to better see and channel and, and not just like your past lives and stuff like that, but just images that you're supposed to see. From your okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And you can get really good at that. Like there's, you definitely have a huge propensity to it in your energy of okay. like being able to see and channel in that space. Awesome. That yeah. would be great. Okay. Yeah. You definitely can do that for sure. Um, and let's, let's pull down some of that, like disbelief in your own imagination. Okay. Um, this is one of my favorite things ever. I had a client ask me once. she was like, how can I tell the difference between if I just imagined it or if I channeled it? And I was like, oh, they're the same thing. There is no difference because there's not, because you're getting information when you're using your imagination. Yes, you're creating to a degree, but it's influenced by the universe. It's the way, direct channel we have to all that is, and all the information is that space. So if you feel like you saw this thing, or you feel like you created this thing, that is the information you're supposed to be getting. Okay, got yeah, it. So let's, yeah, let's pull down some of those walls, because you have a very powerful imagination. Okay. Okay. That uh, released some energy you were holding up to, like kind of some dense stuff in your sphere. Okay. Yeah. That was kind of holding on. Um, if you could have one psychic gift, what would you want? Wow. I don't know what my choices are even like healing. Healing. Yep. Yeah. Like, like energy healing as in feeling and in energy spaces or in physical spaces? I think both because Dane has physical pain in his body and I can feel it. And it's not like my shoulder hurts because his shoulder hurts. I just feel that it's coming from his shoulder. Does, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yes, yeah, totally. Um, so I, it's like it almost radiates off of him. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I believe that so much of that, like, yeah, you can like fall out of your truck and hurt yourself. I get it. I get it. But I think a lot of, or a, a percentage of our physical pain is coming from emotional traumas we're hanging on to. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know that I care if I'm healing the physical issue or the emotional issue, because I think one kind of cancels the other in my mind. That's how Perfect. it looks. To me. Okay. So I see all these moms that are suf suffering and trying hard and 
you know, and I see my kids that have had traumas. Um, and my daughter who lost her mom, she wrote about it today, you know, like that's mm -hmm. never going to not, I, I want that to be a peaceful thing and not, um, a traumatic or sad thing for her, I mm -hmm. guess. I, I want to shift that. Cause I know you don't, if someone gets raped, you don't make the rape go away. It still happened. You still have that memory, but to disconnect those feelings. And I love that because I've done, I've either had that done or been able to do that on myself. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think it's the physical and the emotional cross over. So like with Dane, I can't talk to him about the emotional place it's coming from, but I can touch him in a physical way that helps. Yeah. And if massaging that and feeling it, him saying, how did you know I was hurting now? Like, I just felt it. And so I'm just going to rub your shoulder right here. If that somehow helps him release some of the emotional stuff he doesn't even know he's hanging on to, then that's healing. So I don't care how, which way. It totally does. So like you okay. are actually consciously releasing energy. And so when you sense that, which is a huge gift in and of itself that you feel and sense that it's pain, mm -hmm. like you already are experiencing that super deep intuitive gift. Um, when you feel that, see if you can send an energy with it through your hands when you're rubbing okay. it. It's going to dispel a lot more of it as well. And you have, you're you very good at being that conduit of energy in that space already. Like you, got, you, you connect with your kids in that way and you mm -hmm. help them release things in that space. And I can sense it in your energy, huge. So if you just consciously did that, you already okay. the level that you want. Okay. Yeah. Because I don't do that. I don't, I don't do that. Right, because it, it's not something you it doesn't occur think to do, right? No, but but you saying it makes me go like, oh, now it's like a game in my mind. <laughs> I just created yeah. this whole like, I'm going to see. There are times he'll say, "Can you don't have to rub my knee, but can you just put your hand there? Mm -hmm. And I know that I have, it's, I know that, I didn't think that I was a healer though, actually. That's so interesting. I know that I just, he feels the warmth. He feels like, my spirit, you know, and that makes him calm, but I wasn't thinking of it as me being the conduit to do it. So I wasn't taking it that last couple steps. I think it's hilarious that you don't think of yourself as a healer because not, it's not one really. of the biggest, most healing energies that I felt. Yay. Your energy is so massively healing and literally everything you do in life is about healing. Yep, it is. <laughs> and you're sitting here like, oh no, I'm not a healer. I just do Well, because I want to be. That's what I want to have happen. That's what I hope to have. I mean, even in my podcast interviews, if I ask you that one question in our interview where you're like, wow, you made me think about this in a different way and it changed, something shifted. Like, I don't see that as being a healer, but that's what I want to do. So I think I have the pieces in place now that we're talking about it because no one's ever asked me this. I've never had this conversation, right? <laughs> With myself. Um, and the battle axe. Um, <laughs> so she's badass, dude. She's she's, she's short too. She's kind of fun. Anyway, continue. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not surprised by her. Um, but I, I mean that I, I wanted to do that. I have such a deep desire to do that, but I didn't know what to do to take it from that desire and just like asking a random question every once in a while that made a difference to like actually intentionally doing. And I think some of it will just be asking a question randomly. It won't be as intentional. It'll just be, um, intuitive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, which is fine. I'll keep doing that. But now having those extra steps, that's, I, that's a game in my mind right now. Like I want to have fun and play with that. So, Good. And you have tons of power to do it. And the cool thing is, is if you're in a space, you're like, Oh, I want to help this person heal. Ask for the question. Ask for like, what question should I ask them? You know? Oh, ask your guys, so ask me asking. Okay. 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 Uh -huh. And like immediately you'll, you'll get the answers because okay. with that healing energy, you'll get the question that will help them heal. Like okay. it'll be sent to you for sure. For sure. Okay. And yeah, definitely don't discredit the amount of healing you're already doing because you're doing okay. a lot of it and it's really powerful. Okay. And let's pull that belief. Like I'm not a healer. I wish I was. Okay. And let's put that to I am because you definitely are. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. That released a lot of energy too. That's another one of those things that's standing in your way from like just that next step. Just that like yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. And it should be fun. That's also part of the goal, right? Like it should be a game. Well, like, <laughs> yeah. And I am, well, and that, yes, it is. It makes it fun to have it be a game. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
So yeah. who was who was the other guide who was sarcastic or funny? I don't remember what you said. Uh, so you have your little your short like battle armor. She's right. awesome, super blunt. And then you have your other like rooted earthy guide, and the one that's like short and like the battle. Got one, it. She's, like she's super sarcastic. Oh, okay, okay. It is her. And, like yeah, yeah, yeah. She's very like it's hilarious. Yes. It's very hilarious. <laughs> and she's super cool. Um, and then tuning into anything else, like any other guides that are kind of near you or in your space right now. Um, one that's really like really connected to water. Mm. I don't even know if I feel like a gender on this particular guide, but like very much a guide that's like showing up as water. Really? Not even like form, but like an elemental. Yeah. Um, interesting it, and I think that's part of the healing stuff too and why you resonate with that because water is inherently so healing okay um, and I think there's part of that like why that guide is kind of there and showing up after we had this conversation because they didn't show up initially with the other two okay it's like this healing flowing one um and what this particular guide is showing me which is really interesting is more of like your own inner peace it's like showing me like your inner pendulum I guess is the best way to describe okay. it um, and the message here is just to get comfortable, like feel what the, it would feel like to be in that inner peace space, that calm space. And then when you get pushed off from that, you can just purely examine, huh, why did I not, why was I not in this space? What, what pushed me off from more of an objective standpoint um, okay. and release some of the emotions when that comes, because that's some of the stuff holding you back as well. And some of those blocks that you have is like this need to be tied up in the emotions of whatever is going on. and you don't have to be, you can like look at it from objectively and still have an appropriate reaction. Okay. And that's a big one too. And this is a very interesting water guide. Like just keep showing me like waves and water. Very intriguing. I'm not a hundred percent sure, like not even fully communicating more just showing me images. I, um, love, well, I mean, I love water. I think a lot of people can say that like the sound of it, hearing it, seeing it, knowing it's there, wanting it around. And I know that there's a lot of times where I'm like, I just need to sit in the tub. I just need to sit in the tub. And there's no particular reason except that I just need to. But I did hear from another woman in an energy session, like after energy work, sit in like Epsom salt bath. Mm -hmm. You need to get minerals back. And I was like, oh, so maybe I just um, feel the pull of knowing that that can be a way that you can heal or that calms me down definitely yeah. calms me down yeah because you keep showing me the stuff about your inner peace and stuff so i think that's part of it it's like the water is super essential for like your calming and like okay. where you resonate yeah oh i would i would not disagree with that that's because mm -hmm. if you had said mountains i would have been like yeah i like them but maybe not but water definitely yeah. so I want to tell you something that someone said because it keeps popping into my mind mm -hmm. he was a pastor super cool and he said you attract spirits who I my guess what I gathered is that people who have died and need to pass the other side but they're kind of wandering a little bit lost mm -hmm. and she's like he said you're a magnet to them but they don't belong with you most of them don't belong to you they need to but because you're a magnet then they're kind of hanging out um and I was like okay and he's like so you have to learn how to put yourself in a bubble so that those spirits can pass by and keep moving to where they go that they don't stay with you just because because then they don't know how to move forward does that mean anything to you yeah it's interesting that he had the perspective that they would like get stuck with you um but I do appreciate the like shielding thing because like yeah they can get stuck in your energy field and I do understand that so that's very interesting have you practiced that shielding stuff yeah you don't feel like your energy doesn't feel like it's soaking up anyone else's right now no and i think that at the time i mean it was several years ago and i don't remember why we got onto that conversation why we were having that conversation i can't remember it was just sort of like an oh by the way you do this and um he said, if you feel it, you just need to put yourself in a bubble. Shielding is a great way. But for me, it was like, you know, a clear plastic bubble or I'm here. I can see everything. I can feel it. like I'm right here, but you'd bounce if you tried to touch me mm -hmm. type of. So in my mind, I imagine myself in like a clear plastic bubble. And he said, so if you feel a lot of, ne especially negative energy around you, where for me, sometimes I have trouble getting a deep breath. 
Mm -hmm. I feel pressure and, um, breath has been a thing for me. Um, every once in a while, he's like, if you feel that negative energy, if you feel like it's hard to breathe, just shield yourself. Basically. I don't know why that popped into my mind. Cause it's not something I think about very often. No, that's very interesting. And I bet what energetically it feels like you could actually tune in and speak to these people as well that go past. It doesn't feel like necessarily as energetically, it doesn't feel as much of a magnet as he was Good. saying it is. Um, but it definitely feel like they do come to you on occasion because they know you can, you do have the ability to talk in here if you develop want it to. and want to. I could as a kid. Yeah. When I was a little okay. kid, I could. That was going to be my next thing. I was like, so how many spirits have you talked to? <laughs> it's so peripheral. I mean, talking is almost more like thought and it's not mm -hmm. like you get an answer in words and it's so hard. So when I was a kid, I remember my mom coming out to the porch and saying, Jennifer, who are you talking to? And I was like, I was talking to Jesus. Like I just, I talk to people all the time. I'd imagine a friend named Dee Dee. Um, that might've been the battle ax. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Dee Dee, Dee Dee was like my alter ego that got in trouble. Like if I did something wrong, it was Dee Dee's fault. I don't know. Anyway. No, I think you're right. I think that was the battle act one because she's very much like that. She's, yeah. So I would do bad things and then blame it on Dee Dee. But anyway, she, um, I thought it was normal. And the second I found out it wasn't normal, um, it kind of scared me. Mm -hmm. I remember at night when I slept, sometimes I would get visited. There was one there was one being that visited me a lot when I was a little kid. And after a while, it scared me. And it wasn't because I was told it wasn't normal. It's because this presence started to make me feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, like, I, I said, I don't want to talk to you anymore. I don't want you to visit me anymore. And I remember that and feeling that because it was uncomfortable, um, I didn't want to talk to anybody anymore. And that it wasn't normal so that there was something wrong with me if I did. And I'm mm -hmm. telling you right now, I can have a conversation with, with you and be like, no, I totally get it. People do it. And I absolutely believe it. And it still scares me and makes me uncomfortable and makes me feel not normal. Mm -hmm. So it's a very battling, conflicting yep. feeling for me. But this one particular, whatever it was that came to visit me, made me uncomfortable. I didn't like what it was asking me and what it wanted. And I don't remember what it was. I just remember being like, I can't do this anymore. And I, and I have got to sleep. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't keep talking to you. I've got to sleep. Like I'm getting tired, you know? Yeah. So though I think a combination of those things, and I was raised, I grew up with so much negative energy so much dysfunction and abuse and like physical and sexual, it was very overwhelming. And so I sometimes need to feel like I can distance myself from things that make me uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So it could be that having those conversations just in general now makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. You associate it in your brain with an uncomfortable situation for sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and it doesn't have to be. And energetically what it feels like is that entity was like, grandfather something possibly it, it feels like he, he was like a grandfather like that didn't necessarily meet you when you were no. born but no. yeah you yeah. wouldn't have okay yeah because it feels like it was like your grandfather energy and part of the reason it made you so uncomfortable is because he wanted you to pass messages on to your mom and oh. you did not want to because <laughs> it wasn't normal and it made you upset that's um, quite possible Mm -hmm. that's what it energetically feels like which of course is going to make you immediately be like no like, you need to go away now because I'm not going to go talk to my mom about this right obviously so, yeah. yeah yeah and like push that away so um definitely sense that but you definitely have that ability to communicate and it doesn't necessarily come in words and I, I talk about this a lot with my clients as well Is like we have ways we perceive energy and then we have gifts that come with the ways so like when you have you ever heard of the like the clair senses obviously we heard everyone's heard of like clairvoyance right 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 and people are like oh i want the gift of clairvoyance i was like well that is just a way of perceiving you just clearly see things as opposed to clair audience where you clearly hear things as opposed to clair mm. sentience, where you clearly feel things in your physical body or clair empathy which is those are your empaths that feel things in their emotions right. right so there's just different ways of perceiving so when you're talking with them my guess is they're sending you energy pictures that you're translating into words yourself Okay. Because you're very visual in that way. Uh huh. Um, like for sure. And that's why I said like you can develop like being able to see and feel that sort of thing. That's definitely like one of your big gifts. And that goes for those spirits too. Um, 
but now, so let's go ahead and let's pull that limiting belief of like using this is uncomfortable. Okay. And, and let's switch it to like, I know when and how to use this when I would like. And there's a, you know, there's going to be a deeper process that we can't just cover in one coaching session of truly like releasing some of that stuff to get comfortable. Okay. Um, and the big thing is deciding that you would want to talk to them in the first place. Right. You know, so let's just re- remove some of the energy that's holding you back and then okay. just know that it's still your decision of if you want to. Okay. Okay. A question on the fear. Mm-hmm. Or what would you say you're afraid of when it comes to speaking to me? That people? it's a that it's a negative entity or a, I don't know if that's the right word, that it's, um, that it could harm you. Yeah. Not, yeah. I'm not, I don't know if I'm afraid of being like physically harmed, but, um, I think it was also at a time when there was so much negative energy in the house. I have a fear that I will have conversations or attract a negative energy, I guess. And I don't want to have those conversations. Yeah. So it's a good versus evil whole thing. Like, right. is this a devil or an angel sort of conversation in my head? I, I think that is my, I'm not afraid of the conversations necessarily. And I'm not afraid to say I'm not passing on that message. Mm-hmm. But I think I'm afraid that it's something totally nefarious. Let's, so the, the thing with that particular fear, mm-hmm. like, this is good, I don't want that. You're not. Like, unless you're, you're, you're like, I'm trying to put yourself in a bubble and only talk to those that are benevolent and only allow those that are benevolent into the bubble. Okay. Can we... Can we jump into energetic blocks? Because I know yeah. the, this, it always goes so fast and takes longer. Because I love the limited beliefs and reversing those. You could do those. We could just spend an hour just doing that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unless something else is jumping up for you, I really want to know about energetic blocks. So a lot of those limiting beliefs actually are, are. energetic blocks. Okay. So they, they're relatively one and the same because when you have them, they form blocks that stop your energy. Okay. So basically the concept. So then some of those times when I'm like, hey, I pulled this and released a bunch of other energy that you're holding on to, it's kind of like more energy that's kind of like suctioned itself onto that limiting belief and therefore creating a bigger block. Um, Got so it. So as you pull those, um, it releases some of those energetic blocks as well. Okay. For sure. Yeah. And some of the biggest ones that cause the, like the deepest blocks in your energy are always based in emotion as opposed to just like a statement. So things like fear and shame and guilt and like those denser emotions. Shame's a good one. I like shame. You can just live there for a long time. (laughs) Right. I mean like. This is a naked person. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I mean, I'm not ashamed of that. So there you go. (laughs) Uh But I mean, I think we pick our. I, I feel like, um, for me anyway, I picked the emotion, the negative emotion that kind of attached to most of the stuff. And if that one was shame for me, when I remember somebody saying shame and being like, Oh my gosh, that's where I'm living. You know, Mm -hmm. like I, when I was working a corporate job, I was never doing enough for them. And I was never there enough for my kids. And I was just, it was just all shame. Like if you have sex with somebody when you're single, you're now it's one more number and like everything for me, it didn't, you can't, you can't win, right? No matter which way you do it, it's going Mm -hmm. to be wrong and shame was my word I know but and I think whatever word or feeling that a person picks it's everything's set up and geared right for that because we're really good at doing that yeah yeah and it it energetically too and your guides also say that it's with that shame it's just an overall shame of like existing wrong right like like, who I am is wrong so everything else is going to like I'm I'm ashamed of everything I do because there's nothing I can do that can be right um so it's like an existence shame there and you still have that in your field like in your energy field like you just still have some like the leftover limiting belief like if you did muscle testing or something on it I'm sure it would still come up and you'd be like what the fuck why is this still here I don't want this anymore yeah yeah rid of that forever ago it's just still like resident in there so let's go ahead and pull that out and flip it oh okay okay yeah Let's just do that. Okay, go. Yeah, but let's do that. Um, and also, this, there's, there's a shame of like 
being connected to the universe and having any sort of intuitive powers or psychic gifts like oh. stuff you have a lot of shame around too okay um because obviously when you were a kid it wasn't normal right so right in past, in past lives as well you have some of that carrying oh. over okay so we'll, we'll pull that too and then one more since i just dove in um that came up really clearly is I guess it's fear around feeling those dense emotions, like fear around feeling uncomfortable and feeling, you know, sadness or feeling anger, or feeling oh. shame, like all those dense emotions, like fear of feeling them at all. Um, so let me pull that and then I'll give you a quick analogy about what I try to think about emotions as that I think will help. Okay. Um, so let's click that. Um, so the way I tend to think about emotions specifically when it comes to like the resistance to wanting to feel those denser ones is if you think about emotions like candy, it makes them a lot easier to feel. So okay. no emotions are bad. Like every emotion has a purpose and the, the, it serves a good purpose. You don't need to feel it all the time. And there's sometimes when you, it's not, you shouldn't be feeling it. Right. But it doesn't make them a bad emotion. It's always going to lead you to something you need to heal or release or, you know, experience or whatever it is. So if you think about emotions like candy, it can really help. So like your light emotions, your lighter frequency, your lighter energy is, is like your cotton candy, your joy, okay. your, your love. You just set it on your tongue and it dissolves and goes away and it's all happy and merry. But then like your anger and your jealousy and your shame and these things that are a lot harder to feel are like toffee. You have to chew uh, it for a long time. It's going to get stuck in your teeth and it's going to be kind of a bitch, but it's still candy. It's still going to give you something out of it. Right. So I think that'll help your energy if you, like, you think about that a little bit more as when that fear kind of comes up. But I did pull that out. So you don't have right. to feel the fear. You don't feel obligated to feel it. Yay. Yeah. What There's been a couple of times where I, there's a shift I know when I've had energy work from the first time I got anything done. And not every time, but there's almost like this thud inside my stomach. It's like, thunk, something shifts. And so that's good. I like when I feel that. So that's good. So I felt that a couple of times. I have had zero inkling on past lives ever. And it's never come up in any energy session. And I never ask. I've never, it's just never come up. But you just said that I had something, that I carried something from past lives and stuff. Nothing. Zero. <laughs> yeah has it you've ever had, come up you've had a decent amount of them um somewhere in the like late teens okay like energetically so you've had a decent amount stretching back kind of a long time um it feels like the most recent one that you've had um actually occurred i'm trying to tune into a little bit more of the energy it was like in um the irish immigration to new york you're one of the irish immigrants uh, okay. way like potato famine zone. Um, yeah, back then. And you're really shunned and put out and like, so I can do past life sessions for like an hour whole because there's so many we can dig into and all the traumas and all this right. stuff. So just like really base level on this one, um, yep. is you felt like an outsider all the time. And like, I'll never fit in and I, you know, I'm always going to be persecuted and I can't speak up. And like this feeling of like being powerless is like the biggest theme, like in that particular past life and you still have some integration on that to do if I could like the silhouette of that life and you are a male in this life by the way oh cool um, it, it's like halfway like the silhouette's like halfway into and halfway out of you is the best way to describe it so like you've integrated a lot of it and healed a lot of trauma from that past life but there's still a little bit more that you're still working through I would say as a kid I always felt like I was born in the wrong country or the wrong time zone Mm -hmm. always I was just like this is not where I belong when I was real when I was younger yeah and since I've then left over from that like yeah since then I just feel like there are so many time zones in countries that I could I mean like I think I just love the thought of that so it doesn't bother me so mm -hmm. how do you want to wrap up and and end this what is what's residual for you in this session so the Right now, you are real close to truly tuning in and, and accessing your gifts. I think for you, uh, the best next step would be is to, you know, practice actually that conscious healing, like truly really actually tune into that um, consciously, and that's going to help you leverage it. And then start a magical journal. So what a, what a magical okay. journal is, is every time something like an intuitive ping happens, or you feel your guide out of the corner of your eye, or you see 11, 11, seven times in one day, any of those things 
Okay. <laughs> Any of those things that happen, write them down because okay. it's, tra it's training your brain to start noticing those things as mm -hmm. safe things because you're documenting them as safe. And so your brain's going to okay. let more and more messages come through and it'll just keep opening you up more and more. But you're really close. And the stuff that we've pulled out today is going to be really good for you. Remember okay. to drink a lot of water. Yep. That's going to be really good. And uh, spiraling your water, like making it a little vortex before you drink it, resets the memory on the water. So oh. it'll make it like clean and any pollution stuff that it had a memory of will get out of it. So it'll help your energy better that way. Okay. I have two questions. Is that okay? okay. Yeah. One is, how do I, the word I want to use is integrate. I don't know if that's the right word with mm -hmm. Danielle, who has died, that wants to hang out and be part of this. How do I navigate that the best or do I not need to? You don't need to. The only time she's going to, she wanted to send you those signs initially to make sure you knew she was there and that she, okay. and she like wanted you to do it. She's only going to send you those dimes and signs now when she is trying to guide you to help your ch your children that are okay also. okay um, but other than that like you'll she's only gonna she'll reach out to you if there's something and you're gonna know what it's for okay mm -hmm. okay that was one question and the other one is because my body has had physical traumas mm -hmm. so i feel disconnected sometimes what can i do energetically to bridge that gap so a great thing to do energetically specifically for you is to sit down with your body and recall a time when you feel sad or excited or love or whatever it is and put yourself in that memory and feel where it physically you physically hold those emotions like are your toes curling you know do you have uh -huh. is your heart racing and what it's doing is just connecting like bridging that gap between the, those that like mental and emotional stuff and your physical body and it'll just help bring you back into it so if I find the parts of my body, if I think about that emotion and feel it and the part of my body that I have a hard time connecting with is where I feel it, then that's something that I can focus on to bridge the gap. Mm -hmm. That is a very cool thing. Holy cow, Emily. Thank you. So I don't like, I could ask you questions all day and <laughs> this could be six hours easily. <laughs> thank you so much. You're so welcome. It's been so nice to connect. I, I loved it. And your, your energy is just so great. So thank you for letting me play with it. <laughs> Yay.